Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss some general requirements for planning of hospital. The first one is environment. A hospital and other health facilities shall be so located that it is readily accessible to the community and reasonably free from undue noise, smoke, dust, foul odor, flood, and shall not be located adjacent to railroads, children's playground, airports, industrial plants, etc. The next one is occupancy. A building designed for a hospital or healthcare facility shall be used only for this purposes. A hospital and other healthcare facilities shall provide and maintain a safe environment for patients and public. The building shall be of such construction so that no hazards to the life and safety of patients and public exists. It shall be capable of withstanding weight and elements to which they may be subjected. Exits shall be restricted to the following types. Door leading directly outside the building, interior stair, ramp, and exterior stair. Minimum two exits, remote from each other, shall be provided for each floor of the building. Exits shall terminate directly at an opening space to the outside of the building. A hospital shall ensure the security of person and property within the facility. Spaces shall be wide enough for free movement of patients, whether they are on beds, stretchers or wheelchairs. Circulation routes for transferring patients from one area to another shall be available and free at all times. Corridors for access by patient and equipment shall have a minimum width of 2.44 meters. Corridors and areas not commonly used for bed, stretcher and equipment transport may be reduced in width to 1.83 meters. A ramp or elevator shall be provided for ancillary, clinical and nursing areas located on the upper floor. A ramp shall be provided as access to the entrance of the hospital, not on the same level of the site. All areas in a hospital shall be provided with sufficient illumination to promote comfort, healing and recovery of patients and to enable personnel in the performance of work. Adequate ventilation shall be provided to ensure comfort of patients and public. Auditory and visual privacy. A hospital shall observe acceptable sound level and adequate visual seclusion to achieve the acoustical and privacy requirements in design areas following the unhampered conduct of activities. Water supply. A hospital shall use an approved public water supply system whenever available. The water supply shall be portable, safe for drinking and adequate, and shall be brought into the building free of cross connections. Liquid waste shall be discharged into an approved public sewerage system whenever available. Radioactive waste and other hazards, liquid waste, to be collected and treated in accordance to the rules. And solid waste shall be collected, treated and disposed of in accordance with the applicable codes and laws. Utilities for the maintenance of sanitary system, including approved water supply and sewerage system, shall be provided through the buildings and premises to ensure a clean and healthy environment. A hospital and other health facilities shall provide and maintain a healthy and aesthetic environment for patients and public. 
there shall be an effective building maintenance program in place. The buildings and equipment shall be kept in a state of good repair. Proper maintenance shall be provided to prevent untimely breakdown of buildings and equipments. Floors, walls and ceilings shall be of sturdy materials that shall allow durability, ease of cleaning and fire resistance. There shall be measures for detecting fire such as fire alarms in walls, smoke detectors in ceilings. There shall be devices for quenching fire such as fire extinguishers or fire hoses that are easily visible and accessible in strategic areas. Signage There shall be an effective graphic system composed of a number of individual visual aids and devices arranged to provide information, orientation, direction, identification, prohibition, warning and official notice considered essential to the optimum operation of a hospital. I hope you understood the points explained in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss Requirements for planning of hospital, which includes up to 30 beds. Let us discuss the functional and space requirements. The total area to be provided for a hospital complex shall depend on the availability of land. However, for guidance, an area of one acre or more has been recommended for 30 bedded hospital. Site planning. Hospital sites with high degree of sensitivity to outside noise should be avoided, but may be compatible with other considerations such as accessibility and availability of services. The buildings should be so planned that sensitive areas like wards, consulting and treatment rooms, and operation theatres are placed away from the outdoor source of noise. While planning the hospital building, the importance of landscape elements such as open areas, horticulture, to increase the comfort conditions within the recommendations contained in the part 1 of IS 7662 may be kept in view. Residential accommodations. If adequate land is not available, residential accommodation for the essential staff, only which includes resident medical officer, nurses, and class 4 staff, should be provided. For relatives of patients, some accommodation like shelter home may be provided. Residential accommodation for a major portion of nursing staff should be provided close to the hospital building in the form of a hostel. Now let us discuss the functional and space requirements of each zone in the hospital. The first one is the entrance zone. This zone provides functions such as reception and registration, pharmacy, public utilities and circulation space. The area required per bed is 2 meter square and total area required is 60 meter square. The next zone is ambulatory zone. This zone provides functions such as examination, consultation, nursing room, casualty or emergency, public utilities, and circulation space. The area per bed for the zone should be 10 meters square and total area shall be 300 meters square. Next zone is diagnostic zone. This zone provides functions such as pathology unit, Imaging, which includes radiology, radiography, and ultrasound, 
public utilities and circulation space. The area per bed shall be 6 meter square and total area shall be 180 meter square for this zone. The next zone is intermediate zone. This zone provides functions such as nursing stations, patient area, ancillary rooms, which includes doctor's restroom and nurse's duty rooms, public utilities and circulation space. Area per bed shall be 25 meter square and total area shall be 750 meter square for this zone. The next zone is critical zone which may include operation theater or labor room. This zone provides functions such as patient area, staff area, supply area, operation theater or labor room area, public utilities and circulation space. Area per bed required is 8 meter square and total area required is 240 meter square. The next zone is service zone. This zone provides functions such as dietary, which includes preparation, cooking, delivery, utensil washing, utensil storing, laundry, engineering, which includes civil engineering, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering, and other services such as gas supply, telephone and intercom fire protection, waste disposal, etc. Area per bed required is 7 meter square and total area required is 210 meter square. The last zone is administrative zone which provides functions such as general administration, general stores, public utilities and circulation space. Area per bed required is 2 meter square and total area is 60 meter square. When you add the areas in all of the zones in a hospital, the total area per bed in meter square comes out to be 60 and total area comes out to be 1800 meter square. For this video, the reference I have used is part 1 of IS 12433, which is basic requirements for hospital planning up to 30 bedded hospital. The part 2 of the same IS code gives the basic requirement of hospital planning up to 100 bedded hospital. I hope you understood the points explained in this video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will continue with the requirements of planning for 30 bedded hospital. In this video, we will discuss the building requirements. The first one is circulation area. Circulation areas such as corridors, staircases, etc. in the hospital buildings should not be more than 30% of the total floor area of the building. The height of all the rooms in the hospital should not be less than 3 meter and not more than 3.65 meter measured at any point from the surface of the floor to the lowest point of the ceiling. The minimum headroom such as under the bottom of beams, fans and lights shall be 2.5 meter measured vertical under the beam, fan or light. For the admission of light and air, rooms shall have one or more apertures such as windows, fans and lights opening directly to the external air or into an open veranda. The minimum aggregate areas of such openings excluding doors 
inclusive of frames shall not be less than 20% of the floor area in case of such apertures are located in one wall and not less than 15% of the floor area in case such apertures are located in two opposite walls at the same sill level. The architectural finishes in hospital shall be of such quality which will help in maintenance of better hygienic conditions, especially in sanitary blocks. Flooring in sanitary blocks should be preferably be done with marble or polished stone and glazed or ceramic tile finish should be given on the walls. The design of building shall ensure control of noise due to walking, movement of trolleys and banging of doors, etc. Expansion joint should have a non-metallic beading finish. The door should be openable on both sides in operation theatre while inside at other places. The table number 12G in the UDCPR for Maharashtra state gives the sanitation requirements for hospitals with indoor patient wards. And table number 12H give sanitation requirements for hospitals with outdoor patient department. Let us discuss the requirements of ramps. Ramps shall be finished with non-slip material to enter the building. Minimum width of ramp shall be 1800 mm with maximum gradient as 1 is to 12. Length of ramp shall not exceed 9 meter having 1800 mm high handrail on both sides extending 300 mm beyond top and bottom of the ramp. Minimum gap from the adjacent wall to the handrail shall be 50 mm. Parking requirements In the congested area for every 10 beds, parking area for 2 cars and 12 scooters should be provided. And in non congested area, for every 10 beds, parking area for 3 cars and 10 scooters shall be provided. Space for 1 ambulance per hospital shall be provided. These are the references I have used for the video. The first one is Unified Development Control and Promotion Regulations for Maharashtra State 2020. And the next one is Part 1 of IS 12433, which is Basic Requirements for Hospital Planning up to 30 Bedded Hospital. For the planning of 100 Bedded Hospital, you can use the Part 2 of the same IS code. I hope you understood the points explained in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the requirements of primary healthcare center. A typical primary healthcare center covers a population of 20,000 in hilly, tribal or difficult areas and 30,000 population in plain areas with six indoor or observation beds. First, let us discuss the requirements of outpatient department. The outpatient room should have separate areas for consultation and examination. The area for examination should have sufficient privacy. OPD rooms shall have provision for ample natural light and air. Windows shall open directly to the external air or into an open veranda. One room for counseling should be provided. The next is wards. 
watch should have a minimum dimension of 5.5 meter by 3.5 meter there should be 4 to 6 beds in a primary health center separate wards or areas should be earmarked for males and females with the necessary furniture there should be facilities for drinking water and separate clean toilets for men and women the ward should be easily accessible from the opd so as to obviate the need for a separate nursing staff in the ward and the opd during opd hours nursing station should be located in such a way that health staff can be easily accessible to operation theater and labor room after regular clinic timings the minimum dimensions of labor room shall be 3.8 meter by 4.2 meter clear floor area shall be provided in the room for newborn corner it is a space within the labor room of 20 to 30 square feet in size where a radiant warmer will be kept the labor room shall be provided with a good source of light preferably shadowless minor operation theater or dressing room or emergency room this should be located close to the opd to cater to patients for minor surgeries and emergencies after opd hours it should be well equipped with all the emergency drugs and instruments privacy of patient should be ensured primary healthcare center shall have a laboratory of minimum size 3.8 meter by 2.7 meter sufficient space with work benches and separate areas for collection and screening should be available it should have marble or stone table top for platform and wash basins dispensing cum store area should have minimum dimensions of 3 meter by 3 meter cold chain room logistics room and generator room should have a minimum size of 3 meter by 4 meter an office room should have a minimum size of 3.5 meter by 3 meter hello everyone in this video we will be drawing a primary healthcare center in autocad this is the image of a typical primary healthcare center that we will be drawing before starting any drawing you need to make sure that you are using the correct units for this use the units command i'll be drawing in the metric units so i will select decimal over here and keep the precision as 0.00 and in the insertion scale select meters okay so let's start drawing now first we will draw the entrance for the primary healthcare center using the line command i will draw an entrance of the length 4.5 meter and then i want the width of the entrance to be 3 meter so enter 3 meter as the offset distance let us draw wall on either side of the entrance for this use the offset command and type in distance as 0.23 meter this will be our thickness of the wall After we have drawn the entrance let's draw an examination room beside the entrance For this I will use the rectangular command The dimension of the examination room I will keep it as 3.5 meter by 4 meter And then we will draw the wall thickness outside this room by using the offset command again
Beside the examination room, we will provide a waiting area. The waiting area will have a dimension of 3 meter by 3.5 meter. And then draw the wall thickness. Beside the waiting area, we will provide a cancellation room. Of the dimension 3 meter by 3.5 meter. Then we will provide a general store area The dimensions of this will be 2.1 meter by 3.5 meter. And then beside this, we will provide the WC units. Which will be of the dimension. 2.2 meter by 3.5 meter. We have provided two WC units over here. Make sure to provide the WC units on the exterior walls of the building. After this, we will provide a window of 1.8 meter over here. Now, as you can see, we have drawn this part of the building. And if you notice this part is quite similar to this. So we will use the mirror command to draw this other half of the building. Type MI to activate the mirror command. Select the object that you want to mirror. And then press enter. And then specify the center of this line as your mirror line. And do not erase the source object. And just like that we have drawn the other half of the building. As this is our entrance, in front of the entrance, we will provide a room for registration and record. The dimensions of this room will be 3 meter by 3 meter.
On the left side of the entrance, we will draw a laboratory of the size 3 meter by 3.5 meter. Beside the laboratory, we will draw a nurse's room The dimension of this room will be 3.1 meter by 3.5 meter. And beside this, we will draw a general ward which will accommodate three beds. The dimensions of this ward will be 5.5 meter by 3.5 meter. The general ward need to have access to at least one WC unit. So, we will draw a WC unit over here. The dimensions of the WC unit will be 1.5 meter by 1.8 meter. Similarly, we will provide a general word for female about this. So for that, select this and use the copy command. And then place it over here. This will be our general word for females. We will provide a sterilization unit about this word. Now let us provide a labor room over here of the dimension 3.8 by 4.2 meter. We also need to give a separate WC unit for the labor room. So we will provide WC unit over here of the dimension 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter. In front of the WC unit, we will provide a utility area of the dimension 1.8 by 1.5 meter. As these are all connected to the labor room, we do not need this walls over here. Beside this, we will provide WC units for the staff of the hospital, which will be of the dimension 1.8 meter by 2.7 meter. We have to provide separate WC units for male and female staff, so we'll copy this. over here for joining these lines use the fillet command and select these two lines
So our plan is almost ready. Now we need to trim these intersecting lines. Now you can see I have trimmed all the intersecting lines. As you can see in front of the entrance I have provided steps and also I have provided a ramp over here. Hello everyone. In this video we will be drawing a primary healthcare center in AutoCAD. Now let us draw doors in our plan. For drawing this, use the line command first and draw a line over here. And then by using the offset command, type in the offset distance as 1 meter. This will be the width of the door. And then choose the start center end arc to draw the door. Finally, trim these lines. Similarly, you can copy this arc and draw doors for other room as well. Similarly, you can draw doors like this for the whole plan. As you can see, I have completed drawing doors for the whole plan now. And here you can observe, for the general wards, I have drawn doors with double shutters. Now let us draw windows in our plan. For this, use the rectangle command. I will keep the length of the window as 1.5 meter. Then draw a line at the center. Similarly, I will draw vents for the WC units. The length of the ventilator, I will keep it as 0 0.6 meter. Now we will convert both of these into blocks. For that, use the block command. Enter the name of the block. The first one is window. Select the object and then press enter. And specify a pick point for the block. I will keep the pick point as midpoint of the block. Now we will apply the same steps for this. Now you can delete these both. And to use these blocks in your plan, you can simply go over here in the insert drop down and you can find both of the blocks over here. So first I will insert window.
then you can provide whence for wc As you can see, I have provided windows and ventilators wherever necessary in the plan. Hello everyone. In this video, we will be drawing a primary healthcare center in AutoCAD. The next step is to add text and dimension for each of the rooms. For this, we will use the text command. I will reduce the height of the text. You also have to provide the details about dimensions, so we will measure the length and width of this entrance. First, we will measure the width, which is 3 meter. And the length is 4.5 meter. So, double click on this text to add dimension. While specifying the dimension, make sure that you type in the horizontal dimension first, which is 3 meter, and then type in the vertical dimension, which is 4.5 meter. After this, you can delete this. If you want to make any changes in the text, just double click on it, and from the text editor, you can make changes. Similarly, I will specify the name and dimension for all of the units. As you can see, I have specified the name and dimension for all of the units for our primary healthcare center. Hello everyone. In this video, we will be drawing a primary healthcare center in AutoCAD. For drawing the front elevation, we are going to take help of our plan. In the front elevation, you will be looking the building from this side. So, all the details present on the building on this side will be visible in the front elevation. So, let's start drawing. For this, I will use the Excel line command. This command draws a line of infinite length. So I will draw lines at the edge of the building. This will give the length of the building. While drawing, make sure that the ortho mode is on. So let's draw a line. This will be our ground level. So by using the offset command, we will draw the plinth level, which will be at a height of 0.6 meter from the ground level. We will take floor to floor height as 3.3 .3 meter. After this, draw a line over here and here. And then, you can delete these lines. Next, we will draw the steps and ramp for our front elevation. For this again use Excel line. So 
draw a line over here and now we will draw the steps as the height of our riser is 0.15 meter so we will take the offset distance also as 0.15 meter Turn off ortho mode and then draw a ramp beside the steps. And then delete these lines. Next, we will draw the entrance door for our healthcare center. For this, use the rectangle command. The length of the door will be 3 meter as the entrance width is 3 meter and the height of the door I will give it as 2.1 meter. Draw a line at the center and then draw rectangles. So here I have provided two shutters for the entrance door. Next, let us draw the windows. Use the Excel line command. Draw lines at the edges of the windows. We want to place the windows at a height of 0.9 meter from the floor level. So, draw a line. at a distance of 0.9 meter from the floor level. Use the rectangle command to draw windows. The width of the windows is 1.5 meter and the height of the windows is 1.2 meters. And now you can copy this window, specify the base point, and then delete these lines. Similarly, you can draw the rest of the windows in this way. Here you can see I have drawn all the windows and ventilators which will be visible in the front elevation. One more thing you can also do is provide hatching for the windows. For this we will use the hatch command.
select the color you want You can also add patterns for your windows. Here you can see I have provided hatching for all the windows of the front elevation. Similarly, you can do this for the entrance door as well. Hello everyone, in this video we will be drawing a primary healthcare center in AutoCAD. Now that we have drawn our floor plan and front elevation, let us draw the sectional elevation. For this, first you need to decide from where the section line should pass. It is recommended to pass the section line through the staircase if it is present or through WC and bath. For this plan, I will pass the section line through here. So now that we have drawn a section line, let us start drawing the sectional elevation. For this, I will use the command Excel line and draw edges of the building first. Draw a line over here. This will be our ground level. And then by using the offset command and typing in the distance as 0.6, This will be our plinth level. And then use the offset command again and type in the distance as 3.3 meter. This will be our floor to floor height. Delete the Excel lines. Now we need to draw whatever part is cut by the section line. So first, the thicknesses of all these walls will be visible in the sectional elevation. So let us draw that. The simplest way to draw the thicknesses of the wall is using Excel line command. It might be looking very complicated right now, but once you delete all these extra lines, you can see the thicknesses of the wall in your sectional elevation. So let's delete the unnecessary lines by using the trim command.
So all the walls have been drawn in the sectional elevation now. The next we will draw is this window. The window is at a height of 0.9 meter from the floor. The height of the window is 1.2 meter. Draw a line in the middle. While drawing the sectional elevation, you have to imagine that you are looking the building from this direction and the part in front of the sectional line has been removed and you will see only the details present behind the sectional line. So for example, if you remove the front part of this ward, you will be able to see the door for this WC and also the door for this ward. Similarly, for the nurse's room, you will be able to see this door and also this door over here. So let's draw that in a sectional elevation now. So for drawing that, again, I will use the Excel line command and draw the edges of the door. To draw the door, use the rectangle command. Specify the dimensions of the door. As this is the door for WC, its width will be 0 0.75 meter and height will be 2.1 meter. Similarly, we will draw this door as well. Specify the dimensions for the door again. And as this door has double shutter, we'll draw a line down the middle. And then delete these lines. Similarly, you can draw all these doors in the sectional elevation. Now that we have drawn all the doors, let us draw the roof slab. I will take the thickness of the slab as 0 0.15 meter. And over here, I will draw beams that support the slab, which have a depth of 0 0.45 meter. The dimensions of the beam and slab, which I have just mentioned, are not the standard dimensions 
you have to adopt the dimensions given by the structural engineer. Now let us draw the details of the plinth level. We will separate the plinth level into three parts. The bottom part will be for murum, the middle part will be for gravel and the top part will be for concrete. Let us provide hatching in a sectional elevation now. For this use the hatch command. Let us provide hatching for the thickness of the wall first. The hatching pattern is not visible. For this, we need to change the scale. Now it is visible. Similarly, I have provided hatching for concrete, gravel and murum. With this, our sectional elevation is complete. For every drawing, do not forget to specify the unit of the dimension and direction of the north.